Hey guys, it's Caitlin Walski here with Entertainment Scoop, and I'm interviewing the amazing Tori Devon Smith. The amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. What do you think about approaching Lupita about her being the very first face of Zoe Moon Cosmetics? Other than your face, of course. Right. You know, the hot young face. That's such an interesting childhood growing up in yeah. the foster care system. Yeah. How did you find acting as like your passion? You know, it was it was interesting. One of my great foster parents, her name was Maggie Rupert, and she was a devout Sabbath Day Adventist. Oh. Um, Seventh Day Adventist, I'm sorry. And in Sabbath school, you had to sort of go in front of the class and recite Bible verses. And I remember I was a very, very shy kid, but somehow um, I got the courage because they said if you memorize enough verses, you get to go to Chuck E. Cheese. And oh. so the <laughs> next week I came to Sabbath school on a Saturday, I gave those Bible verses I mean, interpretation. I was just like, I'm going to Chuck E. Cheese. Mm -hmm. And that was sort of my first, my first spark of, of performance. And that really sort of, um, that really inspired me. And then when did you kind of, one day you were just like, I want to do acting. Yeah. Was that like the day, kind of like when you? That was sort of the day. It was actually too in third grade too, because I didn't know so much about performing, but I just knew that I was, I was good at this. People were reacting in a uh -huh. certain way, and it was a third grade play where it was a Christmas play and we were all playing stars and we were competing to see who was going to take the wise men to Jesus. And I played Tiny the star, who no one believed in. Aww. And I ended up <laughs> being chosen to take him, take the wise men to Jesus. And so, and I remember standing in front of the crowd in a magenta, in a magenta sweater. I remember as a little boy, I don't know why, and it was so faded. <laughs> and everyone sort of reacted in a way that was really surprising to me. I thought, I like this. And I just continued to perform. And it helped me into the next level. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's so ma it was so young to figure out, kind of like. Yeah, it's sort of, it's very you natural. You don't know when you're actually going to be a working actor. That concept happens much later. Right. You don't understand. I didn't, even, I didn't even understand that concept in college. I thought a working actor, Hollywood? That, <laughs> that didn't make sense to me, because I'm a the, you know, theatrically yeah. trained actor, so. You're doing pretty well for yourself. Well, I'm doing, uh, you know. <laughs> so how does it feel to have a show like Zoe Ever After that's on TV regularly, comes out every week, yeah. to now having um, The Get Down on Netflix that premieres August 12th, um, yeah. where people can watch more than one episode at a time. Like, now you're on both kind of mediums. Yeah, it's really, really interesting to sort of do a network show and then do a Netflix show. Um, the thing about Zoe Ever After is sort of the anticipation of it all. Mm -hmm and building this audience weekly and, and promoting the word on, on a weekly basis. Mm -hmm. And um, you're really infused with your cast when you do that. And then Netflix is so, sort of lovely because they'll all get it all at once. Yeah. You know? And it's, it's a place where the art can live out in the world on its own. And it's really based on the viewership and yeah. us who choose to make this interesting, who choose to make this important. Mm -hmm. And the word of mouth that's it sort of starts with us. So I, I loved both experiences. And they were both two different periods and whatnot. So it was, mm -hmm. it was really interesting. I mean, Netflix is really big now. So, you know. Their content is so eclectic. Yeah. I mean, from Orange is the New Black to Bloodline to House of Cards to mm -hmm. Netflix to now these films that they're showing. I'm, I'm really excited about a film with Alice and Janning that's coming out soon. So, and then Luke Cage and everything. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so. The Get Down is all about um, American hip hop beginning in the 1970s. Yeah. I mean, were you a huge fan of hip hop while you were growing up? Or yeah, sort of indirectly and directly. Indirect. Okay. Um, I didn't know so much, but I remember watching BET and watching Rakim, you know, and watching Missy Elliott, sort mm -hmm. of in the 90s. Missy and, Elliott. And it w it just connected with me. I remember I listened to Dr. Dre, The Chronic. <laughs> on a cassette tape. A cassette tape. A cassette. You remember those. You know, yeah. I had to like, t you know, t turn the, the thing to rewind it. Um, mm -hmm. And I remember it was, it was sort of, it was really inappropriate because I was a kid listening to it. But I was really enthralled. I thought, what, what are yeah. they saying? Are they, are they doing drugs? What are they doing? What are they? There's, there's sex on this tape. <laughs> I loved it. So <laughs> hip hop is, hip hop is wonderful because it is, it is for one authentically American, mm -hmm. you know, it's, and it, to me, it was the rise of a new rock and roll. And it's authentically black, which I love too, mm -hmm. you know, another yeah. expression of, 
of our, of our hurt and our pain and um, the situations that we live in. It's a really artistic, a really artistic um, endeavor and, and lovely thing. I mean, to know how rap is artistic. It was when I auditioned for The Get Down, I actually had to do a rap. You and did? I, yeah, I did. Because I, I had an audition for one of the leads before I got this oh. other role. And I, I actually did Jay-Z's Can I Live? And the interesting thing is when I had to mimic him, which was really difficult, he created a beat under the beat. And I thought, that's where the talent is. You know, Eminem ah. sort of does that same sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, Tupac, Nas. So to listen to how, how artistic it is, I thought, oh, yeah, that's really good. So you're really involved with uh, causes yeah. outside of acting. I support a lot of them, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How do you, I mean, you're an LGBT supporter. Yeah. Um, animals right support. Yeah. So how do you find time to like stay involved with all these? I just try to keep causes? myself informed. Um, mm -hmm. Right now it's about elevating my career, so that's my concentration. Mm -hmm. And as I gain more clout and as I become a bit more stable in my career, I do want to venture out. My main mm -hmm. focus is, is to become a foster care advocate. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah, and really, and really understand the system from mm -hmm. the ground up and the history of it, of it. I'm actually reading a novel right now called To the End of June by Chris Bean, and it's about um, she went to New York for five years and did an intense study on the foster care system. Okay. And, I, and I'm learning so much about where it came from, you know, in England, how it started in New York, how it mm -hmm. started here. Because I have my own experience. Right. And I, you know, I went through, sort of, you know, the trials and tribulations of it. But I want to know other people's experiences, too. And know what I'm talking about if I'm going to be an advocate. And see right. how can we change the system. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's really interesting when you grow up as a foster kid. You have to be independent very early. Mm -hmm. You know, how are you going to tell a kid to be independent at seven? How yeah, do you do that? That's you know, something clicked in my head at that time, and I thought, okay, so my mommy's not coming. What do I do? Mm. I keep going. Yeah. You know what I that's mean? That's amazing, though, because, I mean, some people don't have, I feel like, that stride to, like, keep yeah. going when, you know, you're being knocked down so well, often. You, exactly, and you feel like the world is against yeah. you. How do you change that around, especially when you're so young? Mm -hmm. It's really, really difficult. Yeah, that's amazing, though. All right, so now we're going to play a little question game. All right. So I'm just going to ask you some random questions. Okay. Give me your best answer. Okay. So what was the last thing you Googled? The last thing I Googled? Um, you remember? Oh, my gosh. What is the last thing I Googled? A play. I was looking for The Elephant Man. Oh. Yeah, because, mm -hmm. yeah, I love that play. Cool. Yeah. Um, who's your favorite person to follow on Instagram? My favorite person to follow on Instagram? Oh, my gosh. I follow a young lady. She's a choreographer um, called Speaker Box, and she works okay. at your neighborhood studio in Culver City, oh. and I love watching her choreography, so I, I really like following her. Dance videos? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I watch so many YouTube dance videos. I love watching them. So many. <laughs> I'm like, I think people steal from you guys, and you guys just put it out there for free. They need to copyright <laughs> that stuff I know. and get some money. It's amazing. I wish yeah. I could like do some of the moves they do. Me, too. Uh, so which celeb have you fangled over the most meeting? Oh, meeting? Yeah. Okay, I was a server a couple of years ago. Oh, really? And okay. I got to serve Pink. <gasps> That's so cool. She came in. She was so lovely. She was like the coolest chick in the room. And, and, and she talked about her Oscar performance to me. <laughs> she talked about how some hobo on Venice Boardwalks um, didn't like her dress. Oh, my God. And, and <laughs> I was just like, Pink? <laughs> That dress was the color of the ruby slippers because she was singing a Wizard of Oz song. And I said, he needs to shut up because, you know, <laughs> he doesn't have what you have. Yeah, you know obviously. I mean? And she laughed and she giggled and she was lovely. Her husband was great. I mean, mm -hmm. she was awesome and beautiful. And I've been a huge fan of her work for so yeah. long. So it was really cool to, to serve her and to meet her. Did you take a picture with her? No, I Aww. didn't get that crazy. The memory <laughs> is enough. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so, what TV show are you currently binge watching? You know what? I just started. I actually had a really great audition for this show, um, Unreal, on Lifetime. Oh, okay, yeah. It's sort of like The Bachelor, yeah. but it's called Everlasting. I, heard it's I actually haven't watched it yet, but all my friends tell me it's amazing. I mean, I'm watching it on Hulu right now. It is so good. Um, Shirley, who's the lead in that show, and Constance Zimmer, who just got an Emmy nomination. They're, it's great. It's just great fun. Yeah. I really think that show is wonderful. Yeah. So who was your first celebrity crush? My first celebrity crush? Mm -hmm. Usher. Usher? 
Yeah, it was my way, and I was young. And again, <laughs> I was watching him on BET, and it's yeah. so amazing that I actually ended up on BET. But yeah, it was Usher so my you guys way. Have, like the same haircut. Yeah, on. and I wanted to be him too. I thought you're like the coolest young black dude I've ever seen. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, we should kiss. <laughs> we should kiss. You know. <laughs> <laughs> let's be together. Yeah, let's be together. <laughs> so uh, who in the cast of Zoe Ever After would you swipe right for on Tinder? Swipe right, that means four, right? Yeah. Um, um, oh, Ignacio Cericcio. Only because he's <laughs> like one of my great friends uh -huh. right now. He's like, we're really, really close. We live in the same city, so Ignacio. Yeah. Close, close. Hola, Ignacio. <laughs> I'm going to make him watch this. <laughs> And uh, do you have a secret talent? A secret talent? I can name all of the presidents. Really? Yeah. Oh, my God. I'll do it. N n really? Should really? We? Washington, <laughs> Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Buren, Harrison, Tyler, Polk, Taylor, Fillmore, Pierce, Pierce Buchanan, Lincoln, Johnson, Grant, Hayes, Garfield, Arthur, Cleveland, Harrison, Cleveland, McKinley, Roosevelt, Taft, <laughs> Wilson, Hardy, Kluvich, Hoover, Roosevelt, Truman, Eisenhower, Kennedy, Johnson, Nixon, Ford, Carter, Reagan, Bush, and Clinton, and Obama. That's amazing. Clinton, Bush, Obama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost forgot Bush. Yeah, 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 yeah. But that's yeah, okay. Yeah. I got it. That was still amazing. I got it. I got it. I, got I don't it. know anyone <laughs> that can do that. Oh, <laughs> well, yeah, no. I learned in third grade and Besides, I never forgot. See, I did. <laughs> <laughs> it happened. Yeah. It, I don't even know how to do fractions anymore. I'm like, how do I do fractions? <laughs> you know what I mean? But you know the presidents, so. I know all the presidents, so hopefully not Trump. That. Okay. Yeah. Um, where were you uh, when you had your first... When you were recognized by your first fan, my you remember the moment fan? where you were at? My first time, oh my gosh, I think I was on Runyon Canyon and I was walking, I was hiking with my friend uh -huh. and there was a young lady, so lovely, and she jumped up and down and she said, oh my God, you're that guy from that show. <laughs> and I thought, hey, how you, how you doing? And she recognized me, which uh -huh. not many people on the West Coast recognizes me, so that was really sweet. And then she put up a Facebook post and a Twitter thing, and I thought, Aww. oh my gosh. And You're it like happens once in a while. The cutest thing was a little girl who came up to me. I was Aww. coming out of the movie in Culver City, and she was like, you're that actor, aren't you? And I <laughs> said, I am. <laughs> You're in that movie. I said, I am. She said, okay. And then she went, you know, ran away and was <laughs> still playing the fountain. Okay. <laughs> she was adorable. Aww. All right, well, thank you so much for being here. And make sure to catch him on The Get Down that premieres August 12th on Netflix. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Bye.